Hi there, welcome to module five, the final stop along the customer journey route. We're talking next level funnels, pipelines, and journal bu journey building tools, but you can journal it if you like. I really love the word pipeline, by the way. What is a pipeline, you ask? Oh man, it's another kind of tactic, but really it's kind of a sandwich of a few different tactics. We're talking about possibly a landing page, which is a micro website that has one job, like one contact form to fill out, one call to action, one lead generation goal. No other pop-ups, footer navigation, main nav, confusion, messaging. A landing page does its job. And then a form that's embedded into that. There might be a thank you page from there. There might be an email series of nurturing or fulfillment if in fact that landing page offered someone an ebook or a tip sheet or a you know PDF of some kind or a webinar. Oh, speaking of, there might be an actual follow-up event like a live webinar or class or some kind of Instagram live happening. Um, and then other things, perhaps in the follow-up emails, there's a, there's a purchase to be made or there's some kind of incentive at the end or a, whatever it is. A pipeline drives people through various touch points all in one singular campaign. And you can build these in my favorite place, which is Kajabi, <laughs> or in lead pages or click funnels. Or there's no shortage of them out there. The reason I love Kajabi is because it's already included in the price of your website software. And it's primarily a website building um, tool, but it also has email marketing, customer relationship management, or your dash, your database, sorry, um, landing pages, offers, products, course hosting, a whole bunch of things. But this isn't a course about Kajabi. Either way, funnels must incorporate the places and things that actual buyers experienced, as in two thirds of early stage stuff are actually human driven. So if we think back to that actual traditional funnel, the upsy downsy one, or the journey if you like, but that early stage awareness building, reach generating, cold audience targeting stuff, Oftentimes that's actually very much human driven. You can run all the billboards on the side of the highway that you want to and spray and pray your message across the land with postcard drops by Canada Post and spend a fortune. But in fact, so much of the top of funnel act activities that take place for our customers who make it to the bottom of the funnel are human driven through word of mouth, referrals, sort of live experience or, or funny little stumble upon activities that make them aware of your brand, which is good and bad, I guess. So the true customer journey, spoiler alert here, is the one that they are actually in control of. And one pervasive aspect of any buyer's journey, it's also kind of hilarious, is that almost no one can describe how it happened. Well, how did you hear about this store and this little soap shop? Huh? I really don't know. Or, oh, no, my friend recommended it, I think. Oh, I've been seeing it for a while as I walk by. Or was that that other store? Well, unless you're really top of mind and like plowing ads and e-news and social content at them and they're paying attention and not bombarded with other people's, then chances are you've just got to be there and be ready for them when they are out there shopping, looking, desiring, taking action. A good suggestion here is audience mapping. This is a course that follows up our SEO course in this 300 level of the 360 series. And if you're ready to put pen to paper and actually build your audiences, those hot, warm and, and cold audiences in Facebook Business Manager so that you can create promoted content and ad campaigns in Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, etc. Um, it's an awesome course that'll take you through both those, again, kind of psychographic, behavioral, um, and demographic segmentation and targeting aspects, and then actually building them out in Ads Manager, which is kind of fun. So trends to embrace, as we're basically recognizing that there's a lot we are in control of, but there's also a lot that we have to loosen the reins on. Perfect. If we're, if we're able to do that, then we're one step ahead of 95% of the businesses out there that still think they're completely in control and that spin and push marketing and more paid ads is the way to go. Storifying social. This is a fantastic way to do what we're speaking of when we're creating that authenticity, personality, trust, 
amongst people that get them moving forward with us. Pulling back the curtains and letting them in on stories, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, just those little micro videos that are so real and raw. And that's what we love. We want to see the real humans behind your brand. We want to get to know you. Love the ephemeral content that's gone the next day or it's just sort of fleeting and fun and that you're showing up for us regularly like a friend. Partnership marketing. I mentioned earlier that creating partnership, partnerships and leveraging other people's content and other people's audiences is like the fastest way to grow your own reach and recognition. And then of course, sales and revenue. So consider who your partnerships might be. It can be with suppliers. Um, you can even do it with competitors and create some sort of, you know, association or umbrella of the various options in the industry to raise the tide of all the players. Uh, but it could also just be, um, anyone who is working with you or near you, or it could be your neighbors, but partners that have some kind of, um, affinity towards you and, and that makes sense to partner with and, uh, and support each other. Immediate support. This is not just a trend. This is a thing that we have to really consider. How are you creating instant connection with people who want to purchase or buy or book with you? And, you know, growing your opportunities to do so through the tools and technology that are out there. It doesn't have to be a chat bot or a pop up on your website, but you know, just better email support inboxes that multiple people can manage, perhaps some VoIP phone lines that are just much more available than you've been in the past with an office line or, you know, cell phones, nobody wants to give out, but just thinking of ways that you can be there to be human and get people across the finish line. Another trend to embrace are these endless paid opportunities. When you get to a place where you're ready to pay to play and you know that your organic reach is low on your social content and you're doing all the things at every stage of the journey, but still you're not showing up, it's time to put some money behind that content to recognize that algorithms are at play and that even five or $10 behind each of your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok posts can go so far in actually reaching your fans and non-fans alike. You'll be blown away. Um, just setting up your audiences in advance, building the right kind of social boosts or promoted content or deeper, more meaningful ad campaigns can actually be so fulfilling and have a massive ROI or ROMI, which is return on marketing investment or ad spend, ROAS. And that is where we get excited and we just want to spend more because we can't believe how $10 spent on ads led to $100 in sales. I'm truth. Nano influencers. Again, not thinking about it as these massive celebrity influencers or big spends that we have to have, but thinking about, you know, the moms in your kid's grade two class and how many people they're able to reach and what it takes to actually get into these micro influencer circles and seed your product or build awareness with people who are happy to tell 10 people, not a million. You don't need a million. You need a hundred or a thousand true fans that are going to tell another 10 each. And that is how we grow consistently over time, not skyrocket to the moon and fall off, but just build slowly and meaningfully with the right people always. Organic and paid content, looking and feeling and functioning the same. It always blows my mind when people have totally different content and they get all salesy and weird in their promoted posts or their ad campaign copy versus their organic posts where they're really human. And the biggest brands in the world are boosting every single post. So their organic content is paid content. There's no such thing as organic because they're Coca-Cola or Dove and they have 0.1% organic reach on their Facebook, Instagram posts. So they put a hundred bucks behind each one and now they're talking. So we're thinking the same way. Organic and paid content should look and feel the same and your paid content should be as real as possible so that it doesn't feel like an ad that people turn away from and block or unsubscribe. They engage with it in the same way they would if it was a live video organically. And finally, shareable offline experiences. I mentioned that if you can create moments for people to capture them at the moment of highest delight, is it checkout? Is it delivery of the product in the mail where they get a QR code that they can snap themselves opening it or unveiling it or using it or whatever that highest moment of customer delight is? See if you can capture it 
and get people sharing. Other people's content is your best ally or user generated content when they're using your hashtag. Because again, you've set the stage. You've told them who you are and what you're about. And they can't wait to put on your camp brand goods t-shirt and go live out their wildest dreams in a canoe, um, you know, and snap a selfie and post it for all their fans and followers for you to then repost and have your content machine constantly filled. That is like the holy grail of content where you've set the stage so much that they can't wait to tell your story for you. Pretty awesome. So final exercise here and final step along the customer journey class anyway, is the roadmap forward. This is something that um, we put into this particular course because it's important. And it is, again, an overarching course that applies to so many pieces of your digital marketing mix. It's not just about building this little journey in isolation. It's about incorporating the fundamentals and foundation of customer journey mentality in everything you do now. Your website development exercises, your SEO, your paid ads, your social media strategy. So if you had to, since none of us are interested in binder plans that sit on the shelf and collect dust for 30 pages worth of nonsense, a one pager to level up, grow and sustain your online business, or let's just say your business or your company as a whole, but most of it being our digital activities. So your goal in growing or incorporating an online revenue stream or some kind of additional e-commerce or, or on internet reach could be your current and primary audience can be described as what in one sentence if you had to. And then in one sentence, what is it that they are asking for that you provide really well, that you're their solution for, whether they know it or not just yet, but you know, how is that exactly what they, what they need and the precise way that you can bring this to them in an online for form, perhaps, how can you better deliver it along that customer journey in the digital touch points, your milestones and timeline for bringing this to life is what in the 30 days, 90 days and 180 days ahead. We love thinking about quarterly sprints, that 90 day mix, but 180 days, six month window is pretty powerful too. The additional research or learning you need to do prior. What do you need to go out and find out more about before you can launch or step in or better your presence in some of these stages that might have some gaps? And the new or improved digital tools or platforms you need are what? Um, the outside support you might need. And of course, this goes along with the budget too. The way you plan on getting the word out once you've built this or the way that you're going to share it or proliferate it is what? So it's not just about building those cool YouTube videos now. How on earth are you going to get going to get them seen? Lots of ways. The way that people will feel after they work with you is what? Paint a picture of success. What is that end result that I'm going to get after I purchase from you from you or book with you? What's my transformation, big or small? And I'm going to feel and the way my life and business are going to change as a result of working with you are what? So just some big questions about, again, how to level up and grow and uh, just continue to build. If we don't know where we're going, we'll never know when we've arrived. And same with our customers flowing through our funnels and journeys. Thanks so much for being here. I hope that you join us in our simplified SEO class next, which tackles all things keywords and content and the basically dismantling of the idea that SEO is too difficult for any of us to understand. But instead, there's some really key things we can do both on our pages and offline of our website in order to rise the search rankings and finally get seen when people have, you know, found our content, heard of us from our top of funnel awareness building exercises, and now they just need to locate us online. Can they do so? Or does our competitor swoop in and steal the thunder? Hope to see you there and thanks again for being here. I wish you all the best.